Welcome to another exciting edition of Million Dollar Peddlers. I'm Paper Guy. And I'm Mr. Magazine. What day of the week is this? Hump day? No, it's not hump no, day. No, if it were no. hump day, we'd be live. Bolo day? It is bolo day. It's Saturday. It must be bolo day. To anybody new to the channel, I'm Paper Guy. 50,000, or no, I don't know, 50,000. 50,000 positives. Yeah. I got 45, 40, 40,000 items online. Some number. Yeah. Just selling yeah, fast. Yeah. Um, work out <laughs> of my house and have a day job. Oh, that's very nice. And you are? And I'm Mr. Magazine. I have 15 employees, a warehouse, and half a million items. And every Saturday what we try to do is we try to bring you some bolos, some stories, some laughs, good time. Uh, hopefully you can find some of these things out there. And why don't you take it away, Mr. Magazine? All right. First out, I am coming out swinging. Ooh. Oh, yes, yep. you are. Yep. This was a, this <laughs> Holy was, I mackerel. picked up a large collection at a house uh, that I pretty much bought the contents. It was all kinds of stuff you could... Movies, toys, uh, you name it. And a collection of Disney things. And I had no idea what these were worth, so I got a hell of a deal. But um, Jim Shore, anything Jim Shore is good. This is a large Tower of Fright. Villains, uh, I guess you'd call it a statue of some sort. 1345 bucks. Well, and the really nice thing, well, first first off, I we did talk about that on our Instagram. So if you aren't following our Instagram, definitely do so. Mm -hmm. uh, do put out tips, do put out uh, interesting items, things like that. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, and the nice thing about that is that looks like it comes with the factory box. Yeah. So it would have the factory packing materials in it. Oh, yeah. I think that is huge and that kind of thing because sure. I see multiple things there that could get damaged really oh, easily if you were yep. not using the factory box. For sure. And Very there were some pieces that were in box, and obviously some fingers and hands got you know broken off of those pieces. But these were all intact. And you know it's something you probably could find at a sale or an estate sale. If they don't know, I mean, where I got them from, they didn't know they would cost this much money or they right. go for this much at this point. So Any idea know, what they cost? New? Uh, a couple. This would be like two, two fifty. I okay. Think. No, so, so, so yeah, they, they were high. They were high with, end right. to begin with. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. So, very cool. Next up, uh, football season is right around the corner, and uh, card season still hot. Uh, this set a year ago would probably be half the price. This went for I think three fifty. Um, it was a hundred fifty dollars set maybe a year or two ago. But uh, you know, you got to show the cards, show the condition of them, and you'll get more money if they're high grade. See, and as I was just going to say, you watch our bolo videos because mm -hmm. now you're taking the advice and putting yeah, the yeah. top cards up there yeah. for people to see. Yeah, the old zoom in routine. Yeah. But yeah, this was eighty six tops football set. It's got Jerry Rice and Steve Young rookies uh, headlining it there. Yeah. Nice. All right. Uh, baseball season, and he's one of the hottest players in the game now. Fernando Tatis Jr. PSA ten uh, throwback Thursday card. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, very cool. Ten is yeah, just uh, beautiful. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, went for like 180 so definitely uh, if you see this card, it's still like a $50 card ungraded. And what, are yeah. the, what would the grading fees on something like that be? Uh, about 20 bucks now, 25 with the shipping. Yeah. Yeah. So. But obviously you wouldn't just, it would probably be more than that if you just got one card graded. Yeah, right, yeah, you want, graded, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Unless it's a uh, yeah. reason why you need to get that. Hey, All I right. picked up this Honus Wagner. I'm going to hold off to get a few more cards yeah, to get graded. Exactly. Well, it's going to cost more to grade that anyways, but yeah. Yeah, I don't think I'd use the post office either. Yeah, well, I, th I think you'd be flying in. <laughs> you'd fly in with a little briefcase, yeah, for sure. To anybody who hasn't seen it, we've actually got a video up about a tragedy that happened when we mailed stuff off to uh, the card grading service. Yeah. So definitely do seek that one out. It's uh You live and learn. Don't crazy make my story. Don't make my mistake. <laughs> crazy story. <laughs> and I still have graded magazines coming in, uh, I would say, weekly. Um, here's the Monsters of Filmland. Issue 34, 8.5. You know, it didn't go for crazy money. I think I took $100 on it. But I still made money even with the 40 to $50 of graded. I didn't pay much for the magazine itself. Well, I think the, the big question I would have on that is what does that go for ungraded? 10 bucks, 20, so, 20 maybe. I might get 20 out of it because it's higher grade, you know, but uh, that's about it. Yeah, so 20 bucks plus, you know, Fifty dollars shipping, you're at seventy, and you got 125 out of it. Right. So getting it graded made you 50 bucks for your time and trouble. Exactly. Yeah. Well worth it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Next up, uh, Overdriver Trucker Magazine. Oh, 34, yeah. 35 dollars. Wow. Yeah. How did I know this is a good magazine? I never had them before. And yep, yeah, uh, we sold a bunch of these. Yeah, they're all in the 30 dollar range. It's it must be a short print magazine from the 70s, but pretty cool. Now, can I ask one quick question? Sure. What would it have gone for if they'd listed it as Overdrive Magazine? Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, you have probably more money, maybe. But you know, you my my lister that made the mistake would still say it's sold. There you go. And I can't argue with that. 
All right, baseball season, and this card a year ago was probably twenty bucks. I think it went for seventy and an offer. No, actually, it might have went for the whole price. Yeah. Well, let me ask this question: It's Don Mattingly rookie card. Yeah. Um, what was that card going for back in the heyday oh, of the in, hobby? In his height of his career, when he, when they had the strike season, a uh, hundred dollars, one hundred fifty dollars. Yeah. Oh, you know, then it dipped down. He never made the Hall of Fame. He was borderline. And then it was down to 20, 25, and, uh, you know, now with the grading craze, and, you know, this looks to be like a, an 8 or a 9 for sure, you know, went for 80 bucks. Wow, so oh, it's yeah. it's still not where it was back no, in the day. sadly, yeah. Crazy, yeah, crazy. Yeah. So we did have a, for anybody um, who never followed the sports card industry, there was a boom back in the oh, huge, yeah, back in the 90s, and some yeah. things went crazy, crazy yeah. high. What was the Mark McGuire rookie going for back then? Maybe a couple hundred. Yeah, once he, once he broke the record, when he yeah. broke the record, I would say two hundred. You know, and actually, it's going back up again because it dropped down to five, ten bucks. Now it's now it's probably a fifty dollar card, but graded ones are probably going for like I think nines are over two, three hundred, and tens are in the thousands. Wow, crazy, so. absolutely crazy. Okay, I'll take it over from here. Uh, the first thing we have over here, you can find these out there. People put no value whatsoever on them. I'm kind of going into your territory here and selling a record. Oh, nice. USO letter on a record, WW2 Ethel Carlson Naval Air Base to Rochester, New York. Wow, cool. um, and actually, the interesting thing about this is I did some research, and I'm fairly sure that Ethel actually uh, served over in England as a, as a nurse over there, yeah. and this sold to somebody in England. So they cool. may have done some research as well and, and bought it because of that. Um, kind of neat, though. Right. What happened back in World War II was you could go to the USO, and they would make a record for you of you talking, and then they would send it to your family so your family could actually, That's pretty cool. as opposed yeah. to reading, they could yeah. actually hear you talking to them. Nice. So kind of a neat little item. Nobody really, know, or not nobody, but a lot of dealers don't know what the heck they are. Yeah. You don't know what the content is. I mean, I, I don't have a record player. I wasn't able to play it. I even noted down below, did yeah. not play it, do not know the content. Yeah. Um, but you can find these things out there. People will charge you a buck for them. I paid a dollar for it. No, is, is that a 33 or 78? Uh, I actually, I think it may have been... Uh, Looks like it could be a 78, but... Uh, no, I don't. I think it is a 78, no. yeah. I don't know if it says it on there yeah. or not, so I may not have noted it. Yeah, it, lo it looks to be from the, the sleeve in the record. A, a quick bolo for you out there, and you may not have known this. Um, and I've never found one out there, and I know they have special markings. Do you know in the early 1960s, there was an aftermarket record player for cars? I didn't know that. Yep. And the record players go for crazy money. Did you yes. know they took special records? That I did not know. They're six, what's 33 and a half? 33 and a third? So there's yeah. 16 and whatever half of 33 and hmm. a third is. Wow. Very deep groove. Hmm. And those records, and they were only put out by like one, I don't know, Columbia or something like that, yeah. put them out. Those records go for a couple hundred dollars a piece if oh, you wow. see them. I don't think I've ever had one of those. I've no. never if seen one. If I did, one, I didn't know I had it. <laughs> <laughs> Just kind of a neat little bolo out there if you're, you know, somebody goes, oh, my dad used to have a record playing in a car, and these are the records from it. Yeah. Buy them. <laughs> they go for crazy money. Sure. You know, there's a limited number of titles and all that. Well, the other thing, too, they wore out pretty quickly as well. So to find sure. them, just crazy price. There's, there's your bonus bolo. Yeah, thank you. Um, New York Women's Bowling Association 1958 State Bowling Tournament Ribbon. Hmm. It went for $15. But this is one of those things that I was at a sale. I remember the sale I was at, and they wanted a dollar, and it was half price day. Hmm. And I said, you know, for $0.50, cents, somebody is going to want to buy this. Now, it took yeah. three years to sell, which is where the long tail comes in. And we've done videos about long tail all right. and all that sort of thing. But I turned $0.50 cents into $15 in three years. Hmm. Better than I'm going to do in the stock market. Yeah, no, this didn't come from the local uh, female Hall of Famer, did it? It did not, no. Oh, okay. No, nope, just came from a, just a general person's thing. But, cool. you know, and that just shows that somebody out there wants to buy it, whether they were a bowling fan. I'm not sure why they bought it, but they hmm. ended up buying it. So kind of a, a neat little thing that cool. yeah. sometimes I do go outside of my, what, what I, my comfort zone, I guess you right. would say, when I'm at a sale, when, I, sure. when the price is just right. And it's easy to ship, too, because yeah. it's however big it is. Uh, next item we have over here. Selective Service Occupational Questionnaire 1942 World War II. Hmm. And look at how many, you know, look how many choices you had for what your job duty was and uh -huh. all that kind of thing. I don't know <clears throat> if they were trying to place you into the job you would be best at yeah, or what it, it was. Like it. Yeah. But how many of these could possibly <clears throat> have survived? And it's unused? Uh, it's got somebody's name. It was sent out but to like, them, but they never, never filled it, it out. Wow. Yeah. Yep. 
not a lot of them out there. I got $25 out of it. I just kind of threw a price on it and ended up selling for it. I put it up for auction first in case it would go big, and it didn't. Right. And then somebody bought it straight out for the $25. Yeah. So I cannot argue with that. It is definitely a neat little item yeah. for their World War II collection. Cool. Uh, next thing we have over here, this <clears> one <throat> I, I know you're going to laugh about. Metropolitan Sud, which means <clears throat> south. See, I took French no. in high school. Yeah. Bus scheduled June 9, 1967 out of Montreal, uh, Canada. Um, it's, it's literally a free bus schedule. And I got the $24 for it, and it shipped to Canada, so they paid $14 shipping on it as well. Nice. So they paid $38 American for a bus schedule. Yeah, Can't argue with that. Um, one of my friends I showed it to, and he said, you just monetize everything, don't you? <laughs> and I said, where else are you going to find a bus schedule from June 9th, 1967? So true. So true. Very well, maybe the only one. <clears throat> it certainly was the only one up for sale. Um, but just goes to show that you can sell things that you just never thought you could sell. Uh, next up over here, everybody always says don't buy dictionaries. I say don't buy dictionaries, yet I got $36. Now, it did take nine years to sell, but I got $36 out of a two-volume set of dictionaries from 1944. Wow. Certainly didn't buy them. They yeah. certainly came and throwing in some deal somewhere, bottom of a box lot, or somebody just threw them in on a, on a say, hey, you're taking these too. Right. Goes to show, though, that even dictionaries do sell eventually. Hmm. Um, I would not certainly run out and buy them at this point. But if they're there, right. Beats throwing them out. Yeah. Um, you were actually with me at the estate sale where I bought this. Okay. And I didn't buy it for these. I bought it because of the box that came in. Oh, okay. Fountain pen calligraphy nib lot of oh, 26. I remember that, yeah. Know nothing about them whatsoever. Yeah. Took lots and lots of pictures, you know, of, of them up close, both sides, up close. So I don't know anything at all about them. Put them up for auction first. I think I took $15 on it. I think I paid $5 for them in a box, and yeah. I bought it for the box. So in the future, yep. my assistant manager's father has an extensive fountain pen collection. He buys them, pays top dollar. So if you get anything good, maybe a quick flip. There you go. Thank you. you I'm it. pretty sure that this nib lot wasn't good. <laughs> no, he'd probably be interested. Well, for what, especially for what you sold it for, he'd, he'd throw the money at you. Oh, okay, yeah. I'm yeah. going to remember that then. Yeah, absolutely. There we go. There we go. And the last, last item we have over here, Household Guide to Wines and Liquors, 1934 Art Deco cover, mixing yeah. recipes, soft cover, book, soft cover book. I think I took $75 oh, on it. Nice. Um, but more than happy to, to sell it. Um, obviously, anything alcohol pre-prohibition is good but when you just come out of prohibition as well which which it had just been repealed at that time yeah um definitely sells i did mention art deco too because it's just a neat looking cover on it as well yeah. uh what a lot of people do is they buy these and they search for missing recipes okay. um because there might have been some drink recipe that yeah. was in this that nobody has thought of since then yeah. and there are bars out there that specialize in the old time recipes yeah Cool. So they buy it, they search on it, they find some interesting recipes, and now that's their hook. Hey, we got a brand new, well, brand new old recipe that they're bringing back. Right. And um, kind of a neat little item, but you can definitely find these things out there. A lot of people don't know there's value in them. Little tip on where to look for these. Look in, a lot of people will have, um, at the estate sales, they'll have lots and lots of recipe books. All the various, mm -hmm. you know... Uh, Durky Spices sent out a recipe yeah. book. Mayonnaise sent out a recipe book. All those, sometimes you'll find hidden up in there, you'll find the alcohol ones. Grab the alcohol ones. They will always sell for you. Cool. So hopefully that helps you some, and we will see you next video. Do hit the like button. Uh, do comment down below if you did find anything or if anything in here got you thinking, hey, I've got that. Maybe I can sell it. Right. And we will see you next video. Take care. Bye-bye.